Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Colleen Meyer with Meyer Mintz LLC, bringing you Fearless in Pink. And we have an amazing guest today. Her name is Kristen Downing, and she is a cultural anthropologist. Kristen, you want to tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, so I got my bachelor's degree from Cal State Long Beach in 2017 in cultural anthropology. I am currently working on my master's in cultural anthropology uh, and working on my thesis as we speak. So can you tell our audience what is a cultural anthropologist? Yeah, so anthropology is essentially the study of man, um, and cultural anthropology is just a subset of that, and that's focusing on culture, uh, being, how man is existing in itself today, its ideals, its values, um, all of that is, you know, cu cultural anthropology. Okay, and so let's talk about your master's thesis. I find your master's thesis fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit about what your master's thesis is? Yeah, my master's thesis is on the cultural shift towards body positivity in social media and marketing. So really focusing on this increase in body positivity that we're seeing, uh, not just across social media, but also across the marketing that happens within social media. So it's basically how it's body, it's body image, body shaming that, you know, it, that type of you know, telling women and girls and men to, I know your studies on women, but it can happen to men too, um, how society dictates to us how we should feel about our body and our weight. Is that correct? Right. So um, our culture has a preconceived notion of what the ideal is. And what the body positivity movement is doing is it's trying to shift away from this ideal into a more accepting version of what natural bodies look like in an attempt to kind of alleviate some of the pressure that a lot of women uh, are feeling to fit that ideal. Yeah, and, and, and like you were, we were talking, it's not just women, but it's young, young girls, and it can get into the, even, you know, under the age of, you know, 10, you, correct me if I'm wrong, that we're, that through media, we're telling them you have to look like this. And then people are trying to conform to that. And so tell me a little bit about um, what you're learning in your study. What are you finding in your study? So what I'm finding in my study is that a lot of women are being presented with images and they're being presented with these images that are the ideal. And it starts starting at a very young age, especially with the news generations, because they're consuming social media in ways that other generations either didn't have access to or wasn't quite as immediately accessible as it is now. Um, so kind of really talking about what is a di diet and a lot of what my um, data is on is asking women uh, what is their definition of diet? How do they perceive diet? Do they feel shame when they look at their body? Do they feel a pressure to change that body? Are they comparing themselves to the images that they see? As well as presenting women with images uh, from marketing that I've seen across social media, um, both with a more standardized version of a body as opposed to like the cultural ideal version of a body and asking them their opinions on the product and the advertisement and what they're seeing when they're looking at these women's bodies. Can you share a little bit, I know you're still working on, you know, wrapping up your thesis. Can you share a little bit about kind of like a synopsis have you? about you know what you're what kind of feel you're getting from these women about their body in the in our diet culture and here in the United States. Yeah, so it might not come to a shock to many, but most of my participants feel very bad about their body. Um, even if they would say I'm average size, they're still comparing. The comparison every single participant said that they find themselves comparing themselves to other women's bodies. Um, so that's just massively prevalent in my data. Um, I'm also seeing that a lot of women are trying to distinguish between the diet that we know as far as supplements and the way that, you know, the things that we take to lose weight 
as opposed to what we're eating. So there's kind of this divulgence between, well, you say diet, but I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to get healthy. And so we're seeing a shift in the language that we're using um, to kind of take away from the negative, but I'm trying to see if there's actually, is that negative going away or is it shape shifting? Mm -hmm. Now we now you and I've had this conversation before about women's body types. Just because you're skinny doesn't mean that you're healthy. Mm -hmm. And just because you are heavier doesn't mean you're unhealthy. So talk to me a little bit about that. So we're very visual. And so our culture seems to make this assumption on a person's health based on the way that they look. Um, there is a movement that is occurring called Health at Every Size, and it is an organization behind the movement. Um, and, you know, it's really taking a look at the health of a person regardless of their size, whether you are overweight and working with your physician to get in a healthier state and that's your goal, then that's fine. We're going to focus on your health at every size um, to being a bodybuilder and, you know, being a fitness guru and, you know, that kind of healthy. And it's really about health at every size and not so much about as assuming what's going on the inside of a person uh, just by looking at their outside. Yeah, yeah, Kristen, I, I appreciate that you're, you're saying that because it's not about, you know, because like if we had a medical doctor on here, they would say, you know, if someone's heavier, they're unhealthy. But that's not what we're talking here. What we're talking about accepting, accepting where you are at. And if you're saying I'm at this size and I'm trying to get healthier, then then that's OK, too, you know, because you can be skinny or thin and still not be healthy and be still saying, I'm trying to eat to be healthier. Does it, it can go on either side of the spectrum, right? Absolutely. You can look at a person who on the outside might fit aesthetically our cultural ideal, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that person doesn't struggle with uh, anything, a disease that makes it hard for them to gain weight, or maybe they just don't eat right, uh, or any multitude of things. You really honestly do not know what's going on inside the body of a person. Um, whereas there are people who say, you know, might be a size 14 or a size 16 that work out every day and they eat healthy. And that's just the way that their body looks. And, you know, but we, we have a, a negative association with this person on their weight as opposed to this person but you really truly have no idea what's going on so let's talk about body imaging and and you know being that perfect body and having that perfect body who determines that in our culture because you know if you look at history you know in the renaissance period you know women that were uh, more full-figured were mm -hmm. considered you know uh, that's the ideal women the 60s it was skinny with twiggy you know, we're kind of still in that a little bit with the real, you know, we're obsessed with thinness, but who sets those standards? Um, in our culture, uh, it's the patriarchy, it's the male gaze. Um, women want to be perceived as sexy. They want to be perceived as desirable. And when you have societies that are predominantly male ran or a patriarchal system, oftentimes the men uh, and their gaze is what sets the standard for being, you know, sexy. So and back in this times, a man loved a voluptuous woman. So that is more of the cultural accepted look. Whereas today, you know, men have a certain particular style that they choose to like view as opposed to the other. And so that really sets the standard. And then when you have people in the industries, in marketing and in Hollywood, uh, who are presenting women who fit that male gaze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that, um, you know, that's what's creating. And, 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 and in many times, you know, like, like I grew up in the, in the time of the Barbie doll. And if Barbie was a person and you took those same measurements, you know, there's, that person could not exist with those measurements, with the, the waist being that tiny, right? right. So, when people from my generation are striving to be Barbie, you know, you're already setting me up to fail in, in, in my, um, in my expectations of myself. So let's talk about, um, so that was when I was a child. Let's talk about children today. What would you tell parents uh, with children, you know, um, tweens and younger, even, you know, and even teenagers, what, 
should that what should that what can they do to help their children pass that body imaging type of self pro, um, profiling? Uh, part of anthropology is we take a look at language. Um, the fun thing about anthropology is we look at life as uh, holistically. So not everything is black and white. And part of that is language. Visually, they're seeing these images. But also we need to focus on our language, what you're saying to your child, not commenting negatively about their appearance, um, making sure that you're giving them positive reinforcement, telling them things that they should love about themselves and encouraging them to love things about themselves. Um, it really starts with the words that we're using um, with our children. Uh, and especially with the Barbie situation, you know, that's very, that's one of the first things we learn when we're handed this image as a child. And you diversify the things that your child is looking at on social, if your child has a social, diversify the images that they're being presented with in their toys. There's all kinds of things that you can bring to them to say, this is not necessarily the normal, it's just a cultural standard. So you can start them off young as far as what their expectations are. So let's talk about something that I noticed. Women can be worse on women than men can be on women. Some women can be vicious. You know, if you see a talk show and this person's on there, I'm losing weight and I'm dieting and, or they'll say, I love myself. This is me and I, you know, and I'm a, you know, super skinny or super big or whatever, or somewhere in between. And I love myself. They clap, but then you mm -hmm. got some, Somebody on social media, whether it's a, a regular person, a, a singer, an actor, actress, and there's a picture of them that's not as flattering. It's like a piranha. It's, 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 it's almost heartless in a lot of ways where they go after them about their weight. And what do you as a culture anthropologist think about that phenomena? Well, I think that uh, women kind of dragging other women down supports the patriarchy and supports the male gaze. Um, it works in it works in their favor. If women are working against each other to support these cultural norms, then we're not going to see change. When women start supporting each other and start understanding each other, uh, that's when we'll start to really see change. Um, but as long as we tear each other down to support this cultural ideal to support the male gaze, we're not going to get anywhere. And in anthropology, we talk a lot about social norms and anytime anyone steps outside of a social norm, they become a pariah. Uh, so, you know, there's kind of a knee jerk reaction to shame anybody not fitting the social norm. So people on social media that don't fit the social norm, uh, unfortunately they get a large brunt of that hate, which is just really unnecessary. But if mm -hmm. we learn to support each other, then we can really kind of break down these barriers and start to move forward and change our culture and our culture's view on women and their bodies. Now let's talk about um, the diet culture and social media. Do you, what, what do you think could help get pulled away from that? What do you think we could do a little bit different as, you know, getting out there? Okay, so because there's marketers and there's people out there, Hollywood, mm -hmm. but then there's a lot of just regular people too. What can we do as regular people to counterbalance that? And where do you think change needs to, to be? So I think change starts in representation, uh, representation of different body styles, people with different uh, abilities, things of those natures. Um, they need to be presented in our marketing. Um, and I think that women, us women, we need to start focusing our energies on supporting brands that have diversity, supporting brands that have representation. Uh, because once you start kind of using your wallet to make social change, that's when you're going to see a difference. If this brand is absolutely refusing to uh, have representation, then don't support them. And then eventually these things will start to change. And you have brands that are using representation, support them. And then we can start seeing more of this and then less of this. You know, and I agree. And I think from, that's a great thing that you just said was, you know, we have to vote with our wallet, right? We only support companies that are, um, that show div women in, in, uh, div uh, variety of sizes right mm -hmm. so if you could um 
give one label to your study or one label to what's going on with body shaming, what would it be? What would you, what would the one label be? One label. <laughs> so if you say body shaming, is it, is it a, is it more of a social, social thing or is it more of a marketing thing? Do you see what I'm saying? Where, where does that separate? Is it, is it, is it because we see the women on TV and we want to be beautiful like them? Or is it a social thing where, you know, the way we were raised, you know, women, you know, we like my, my podcast, you know, the reason it's fearless and pink is because who says we have to be more, who, who says we have to be male to be powerful. Right. So, so if you had to, to give it kind of a label or a title, what would it be? Uh, I mean, I guess I would say it was social. I think the beauty of anthropology is that you very rarely ever see an anthropologist put a label on anything because we do have a tendency to view things holistically and everything has something in the pot. Um, but it is, it is social. Now, whether that social means what we're seeing in our marketing or the way that we perceive and speak to one another, it all works together. It all works together to create a problem. It'll all work together to solve a problem. Do you, do you see any changes coming in, in the next, let's say 10 years with this topic, or do you see it kind of sailing that same ship going the same direction, or do you see some kind of shifting to a more diverse uh, female body imaging? I definitely see it getting better. Uh, there is a counter shift. People are not, people are, like you said earlier, tearing each other down. They're fighting it. Uh, but it doesn't appear to be stopping the companies that are doing it. And that is so essential. They are continuing to push forward. And I think that that gives me hope because if we don't see the end of it, if it doesn't go away, then that leaves the opportunity for there to be more and for it to be better. So I'm hoping within the next 10 years, instead of seeing an image of a woman that is different uh, than yourself, won't have this knee jerk reaction of negative, uh, but it will become the norm and people won't have such adverse like reactions to it. So in 10 years, I'm hoping it, I'm not, it looks like it will get better. So we'll see. You know, I, I like what you just said, because we should be able to look at a, a woman, another woman and say, you know, she's beautiful in her way and I'm beautiful in my way. And that's OK on either mm -hmm. way. And and, and to be supportive. And, and, you know, when I see a woman that's beautiful, I'm like, you know, look at her. She's gorgeous. Good for her. Rather than trying to to, to either tear myself down or tear her down. And I think that goes to back to just self-love self-love yeah and you should love yourself no matter what and by all means I feel like sometimes when we have these types of conversations um, people that might be in the fitness or enjoy being you know a smaller size take it as uh, a personal uh, attack on them but absolutely not you should love yourself whether you fit the culture norm or not That's uh, right. the problem is the culture norm, this perceived notion of how what, how women need to be one way, but we need to embrace them from here to them all the way over there. Just, in, we need to just love ourselves regardless. You know, I love that Kristen. Thank you so much. Cause I know a lot of people think we're, 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 we're giving, you know, we're, we're not saying this one's better or that one's better. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the social norm and what's being sold to us as the ideal woman. And, and I appreciate that. Well, Kristen, I just wanted to say thank you for coming on. You are fearless in pink and we'll have you on again talking about some other cultural um, issues that are coming up in, or that are happening in our society. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It was fun.